In this video, we're going to take a look at the last segment of single displacement reactions, which is which is when you have a uh, non-metal replacing a non-metal in a compound. So there is a reactivity series for uh, non-metals as well, uh, and it's actually pretty much found on your periodic table. Um, essentially, if you look at the halogens, they're the most common non-metals that react because remember the noble gases are unreactive um, in single displacement reactions, especially. Uh, so you can see that as you go up the halogens list. Uh, you get more and more reactive. So fluorine is your most reactive halogen, and then everything else below it is less reactive um, as a non-metal in single displacements. So we're going to do some examples of that happening, and we're going to predict products using that. Just like with the examples of metals single displacement, you can have cases where there's no reaction occurring. And then um, you can also try out the scenario over here, where you're going to do the same thing. You're going to read the scenario, see if predict if a reaction will happen, if so, balance the equation, then watch the demonstration to see if a reaction actually did happen and describe all the evidences to support that a reaction happened. Um, so you can take a look here at the reactivity series list for non-metals. Um, this one incorporates uh, oxygen and sulfur as well. Um, and so you can see where the reactivity lies when it comes to the non-metals as well. Uh, that there is also included in your non-metals reactivity series found under other data tables, and you can use that when you're trying to predict if reactions will occur. So let's go ahead and try a few examples out. So uh, we're going to do an example where we have um, F2 reacting with uh, NABR. Now, because this is a non-metal, it's not going to kick out the metal. It's going to try to kick out the non-metal. As we know, the non-metal is more reactive the higher up it is in the periodic table in the halogens. Um, but we'll just take a look here just to make sure. So fluorine is more reactive than bromine. So fluorine can kick bromine out of the compound. And so that's what's going to happen. Our bromine is going to be um, all alone now. So Br2, and remember that that's liquid at room temperature, plus our compound formed between Na and F, which is NaF. You do the crisscross between Na and F. So Na is plus 1, F is minus 1, crisscross it, and there you go. And we're going to go ahead and assume that we're dealing with an aqueous uh, solution right now. Um, but like I said, later on, we'll learn how to figure that out for real. Um, and we can balance it. So I think I need um, two over here, two over here, and the rest is one and one. So let's take a look at our next example. We want to see if I2 will displace bromine because it's a non-metal. I2 is non-metal. It's going to try to kick out the non-metal from the compound. So we'll take a look to see if I2 is more reactive or less reactive than bromine. Bromine is over here. Iodine's over here. So bromine's more reactive. If bromine is more reactive, iodine cannot kick bromine out. So this is going to be a case of no reaction. And now we'll try this one here. So we have chlorine reacting with potassium iodide. Chlorine's a non-metal, so it should try to kick out the non-metal in the compound. We'll take a look if that actually works out. As you can see from our list here, chlorine's higher up than iodine, but let's go to look at the other data table area here to make sure that's true. So yep, chlorine definitely um, more reactive than iodine. And so we can go ahead and uh, say that reaction is gonna happen. So iodine will be alone, I2, right? Cause it's half sprinkle, just like we saw with the other ones there. It's gonna be a solid at room temperature. And then afterwards we have the compound form between K and Cl. So K plus one, Cl minus one, crisscross it, and you get KCl, and we can write down that it's aqueous for now. So um, that there was just some examples of uh, single displacement reactions happening where a non-metal is reacting with a metallic compound, and the non-metal is going to kick the non-metal out rather than kick the metal out like it was in this pre previous uh, situations. Um, so you can see here the activity series for non-metals, um, and again, higher up is most reactive with fluorine, and towards the bottom is uh, less reactive with sulfur. So now that we've done those examples, you can go ahead and try the uh, scenario from the uh, predict, observe, explain situation there. Um, and then also, this is just a summary here of our activity series. We have one for metals and one for non-metals. Make sure you retry the examples from the presentation so you understand those before jumping into the worksheets. And when you go to the worksheets, don't worry about doing every single question. Focus on picking and choosing questions that give you a variety of practice so you can understand the concepts.